Two cup, what I've talked about before. You do all the color that you ever need. And when you're ready to start, you are making an estimate of um, a strategy to get the painting quickly done as possible, so so that you um, are not getting fatigue and working long hours needlessly on your painting. So my aim is to give you a very, very rapid shortcut. Now, I'm doing a painting like this of this dog in Peru, it's a Peruvian dog. I do the background first. Get it over with, get it behind you. And background, I meant to be generalized, not very detailed. Because the eye doesn't see that way. The eye looked at the object of our viewing, which was the dog. Therefore, all of this should not be too critical. Um, go over it lightly with your breath stroke and don't worry too much about it. Don't invest all your time on the background. Get it done quickly, okay? Have fun at it, and you can watch me as I go along. One hour has left and during this background. Again, it is not as important as the subject matter. It is, however, important to match the color. And I'm going to go over it one more time till I feel really good about it because when you do the background, you're doing a major chunk of your work over with. 
and you have less fatigue, and you'll be able to work solely on the dog alone. You need to work on the dog much more than you do on the background. Now you will notice that the more I put into it, I am showing an arc of labor into the detail. And for the, uh, the stucco, I use a really old brush to give me that effect. Not too much water. I'll just take some of it and dab it. Like that, see? It gives it more stucco feel. Now it's time to go into a little more detail. And I'm doing this great by the door. Watch the angle. It's parallel to the door. I put a little shadow under the door here, a little crack. white Now you have the overall nebulous effect of the background. Neither sharp nor precise or anything like that because the subject matter in the painting is the dog itself. So with this dog, it is time now to make your screen larger on your iPad and really dig into the dark appearance. But start marking off where the eye is. Just put it there and the nose for reference. And build up the shadow very gently at the paws. And uh, this white fur has some of the silvery shadow. And underneath the, the, uh, the foreleg, there's a slight and the turn of yellow mixed with the soft gray and the silver effect and the, the whole, whatever you call them, the pad, the pad too, work on that with a very 
fine brush. Now we made some progress. And how are you guys doing? Don't be discouraged. It took many Tinkerbell strokes to get there. Around the entire body. You are focused only on the dog. Everything else is um, not important as the dog is. So, you need to step back, back and forth. Look at the picture again, step back. If the nose too pink, too brown, you ask yourself these questions. Now I'm going to make a question myself. There's very low contrast between the wall and the dog's head. So, because the dog's head is really brightly lit in the sunlight, I'm going to put a little wash over the background, slightly darker, and that will make the head pop out more. These are many little fine decisions that you make as you're doing a, a portrait of a dog. Um, if you want to look at the face more, you work on the face more. And if you notice something wrong with it, fix it. Look at the photo, fix it. I have many questions to do with the tiny brush. And with the dog's fur, try to go in the direction of the way it grows, the growth of the fur. We call it the grain. So your brush strokes, as you finalize, should be in those directions. So we go this way, that way, that will give it more life. And um, then you can step back again and review, take a break, go outside, stretch, and give it another shot, okay?